we're starting now. Yes, no yep. worries. Oh, no worries. G'day, boys. Oh, good day. How are you going? <laughs> How you doing? Mm, Hi, <laughs> we're One Direction. Do you mind if I keep cheeky notes? Just easy, easy, easy yes. Okay. I appreciate you taking the time. Yeah, no, no worries. I, uh, yeah, so I've listened through the album in its entirety twice now. You know, gotta gotta really get couple in there. Streams, couple streams, couple streams. <laughs> <out already. laughs> um, I had like a couple of, that I like had to listen to a few more times, but uh, it's really fucking impressive. Really? It's, yeah. That's you did a really that's a good, good job. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that. Um, how does, so how long have you been working on it? Um, well, probably this time last year, Back Pocket Plug, I sort of got done. And that was the first time uh, we, like, I moved from uh, the parodies into, like, original stuff. So we whipped that up. And then around the time Back Pocket Plug came out, I was talking to Jake um, because Back Pocket Plug was made with Mikey D., if you're out there, mate, appreciate your, your support and efforts. Uh, yeah, so that was made with Mikey D. And then, um, yeah, I hit Jacob, who's a music producer, and I was like, oh, you know, be keen to collab because we worked together at Kiss FM. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, so it was about this time last year we started working on Pie and Chips, which sounded a lot different to what it sounds yeah. now. It was like a completely different version. We completed it. And I was going to get it out last year, but just couldn't get it out in time. So, um, yeah, probably November, December, I was like, oh, let's do an EP and um, hit Jake up and <laughs> I'm like, yeah, but we got to do Pine Chips again. And he's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, we redid Pine Chips and then from there, yeah. So it's been probably almost a year, but I'd probably say six months of like working on it. Yeah, right. Probably so, since the start of the year. So with recording Back Pocket Plugger, um, <laughs> getting that out, kind of getting the response and stuff like that, did that adjust the way you looked at going into recording the rest of the EP? Um, well... The good thing with Jake is, well, even Mikey too. <laughs> I feel like I'm cheating on him. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the, the good thing with Jake is, I think we got a, a bit of a um, like a poppier uh, mutual love yeah, of, of yeah. pop music, um, and yeah. So I, I don't know. I felt like I didn't want to do just like um, a typical footy sounding album song, like. Anthony McDonald, Tip and Woody. Like, yeah. great, great song. <laughs> I wanted to post Malone it up a little bit. Yeah, right. And almost um, just make songs that I would listen to. Mm-hmm. And I remember talking to, like, Connor Rogers and, and um, you know, other people, and they're like, oh, if you make it a bit more Paul Kelly, Silver Chair, whatever, it'll it'll resonate more um, with a footy audience. But I was just like, nah, I just want to make pop songs. <laughs> yeah, it kind of... It's funny you say that, because I felt like it was really telling, especially with the first track, that it was kind of felt a lot like a, you know, energy builder yeah. or like a way to yeah. get a feel for what the, what you were expecting yeah. for the rest of the yeah. album. Yeah. Was that intentional? What were your thoughts on the first track when I came and... Um... When, when he said that, because it was more of an instrumental than than an actual song kind of thing and it was a build-up, so it gets people in the mood for the entire thing. Yeah. And it sets the tone, I think, for the entire album, so it's just a bit, bit like of a, you know, build-up and a, ooh, it's coming. And I was like, oh, well, this is war. Um, that came about um, because a lot of the kids were using Back Pocket Plugger yeah, as like a soundtrack to like their footy montage videos right. and I was like oh I want like an inspirational like little kids making you know, highlights of Dangerfield running through brick walls and stuff like that so I was like oh a real tribal footy song <laughs> and then we always joke about um, you know oh, the dream of having a bit of a meme live one night only um, sort of night and we always keep joking about This Is War as like the music that plays when everything's dark before yeah, we come right. out so I, don't know, I reckon that's a great um, way to kick off the album. I, I, I'm really interested to see what people think of it. Yeah, well, I think what's really what what makes it work so well is, like you said, a lot of people expect when you hear like a footy album or something like that, you're getting your Akadaka, your kind yeah. of Triple M. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So kind of being able from the outset to be like that, don't expect that here. Yeah, We're going yeah. in a different direction and yeah. kind of mod, kind of modernizing it. Uh, yeah. I think was really really cool. Uh, Jake, to you quickly. Uh, you know, you're obviously a producer and from what I've heard, a very talented one. Um, what was your experience, you know, when DOS came up to you and was like, this is what I want to do? I'm sure it was pretty different to anything you'd done before. Yeah, well, I've never sort of worked with, well, never, a YouTuber or a, a diva. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with, with such an um, audience already. Yeah, so right. it was a bit exciting um, as soon as he sort of came to me. I was like, yeah, this sounds awesome. And any challenge that sort of comes my way in regards to music, I'm always up for it. So when he said, like, all right, shaky boy, like, 
I've got this got this idea of a a, a song. Do you want to help me work? And I was like, bloody oath, man! Like this would be sick. And then we made pine chips, and then yeah, it was I was pretty stoked with it. I was like, yeah, this is sick, man. This is sick. And then he sort of you know flapped me a bit when he goes, Jackie boy, not a fan of it. I'm changing that. <laughs> so my heart did rip, rip apart. But, Imagine yeah. I was like, oh, Jackie boy, I'm not a fan of it. I'm going to go see uh, another mate. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't do too well. Um, and then as soon as we finished Pine Chips, like the remaking that, like the second version of it, I was like, yeah, this is, this is very, very exciting. Um, we did have our troubles, I guess, at the start. And you, I guess you doubted. He's like, oh, maybe we just stick with one song, maybe. Well, yeah, I, I was trying. So Jake lives a long, long way away from where we are now. Um, and it was, uh, you know... COVID sort of helped this become an album, but before yeah. COVID, uh, you know, sorry to anyone who's been sick or anything, but um, it's certainly, <laughs> it certainly helped this. Um, yeah, before COVID, you know, it would take me two hours to get to Jake's, and um, I think you went to Queensland for a little bit when we were trying, That's to, right. trying to get yeah. it going in like That's November right. last year, and then December, I was probably getting pissed over the summer, <laughs> and like, we just couldn't meet up, so I was like, you know, I, I sort of said from the outset an EP, and then I'm like, well... Because C. McDonald has a lot of crazy ideas and a lot of crazy <laughs> plans. And I was like, you know, I'm not a musician. <laughs> the producer lives to his way. Maybe I just, we'll take one song at a time. So I hit Jake up and I'm like, oh, look, maybe we just do an extra song. And, you know, take it one song at a time and that'll be all cool. He's like, no, we're doing an EP. Yeah. I'm like, great, I know he's in. So that was, um, that was exciting. And on that, like... It, it went from one song to two songs to three to four to five to, and now what are we up to nine? I remember we were at like five or six and you were like, um, uh, I remember you were like, oh yeah, you know, oh, we're nearly done, we're nearly done. And I was like, the reason it got more and more is because we had so many sad songs. We had like... Um, yeah, you wanted to, like spaces to fill within the I just remember the going... Within the album. I remember like, if I bring out Pie and Chips and then um, Hold Out Hope and then... Uh, you know, this, it's just sad. It's just a sad EP. And I, I wanted to... Because I reckon, um, like, emotional music and comedy work really well. And I, I reckon it's almost easy. Uh, well, not easy, but, like, um, yeah, when I do a parody song and the instrumental's sad, it's it's funny. When, when, it, when you're singing sad about, like, Jake Stringer and BT, it, it's a bit easier to make that funny. So I was like, I reckon this needs a bit of, a bit of a lift. So that's when we started adding, like, My Footy Dreams Never Come True... <laughs> and um, Grand Final Day at the end. So it just made it not a depressing <laughs> four song album. Yeah, right. Um, was it intentional to have those kind of higher energy songs like My Footy Dreams, Never Come True, and Young Gun, and Grand Final Day towards the end of the album? Because it felt like, you know, it was quite somber and quite like deep at points at the start. And then yeah. I was thinking, you know, a couple of tracks in, I was like, oh, wow, this is actually pretty, you know, like I need to have a lie down. Yeah, and, yeah. and then it really picks up. And I was, yeah, kind of. Did you find, was it very intentional how you went about track listing and stuff like that? Or I remember going, this is war, you know, that's, that's behind yeah, that the curtain. Yeah. That's behind the curtain. You know, that's the boxer just about to come out. Um, and then I'll, yeah, I think that's just such an epic start. And then I think um, I don't want to play one, slaps you in the face and goes, all right, this is what we're doing. And then Pie and Chips, I reckon it's just a good, complete package of a song. And then back pocket plug. So I just felt like that four was like such a strong start. Um, and then hopefully people are like, oh, this is actually all right. And then when the other ones come in, they sort of, um, we got the runs on the board already to mix it yeah. up a little bit. Yeah, right. And then, I don't know, the rest, it went, you know, I think it goes like cult figures, which is probably the saddest, like desperate, <laughs> like, oh, I miss these <laughs> shit footballers. Um, and then, yeah, it just had to lift towards the end. And I remember hitting Jake up and saying, um, I think Hold Out Hope, the way that that um, ends, the big crescendo, is such a way, a nice cinematic way to end the um, the the album. And then Jake was like, oh, probably a little bit sad, maybe Grand Final Day. And then it was like, oh, yeah, Grand Final Day is the last yeah. day of the footy calendar. Grand Final Day is the last song. Um, but, so, yeah, it was intentional, but I right. think we could just shuffle it. And yeah. <laughs> you did change a few times. I was... Like, yeah, this is this sounds good. No, this sounds good. <laughs> yeah, we're pretty set on. I think. Well, this is this is wars definitely the first yeah. one. Like that was set in stone. Yeah. yeah. 
I was pretty set in stone that grand final should be last. Yeah, Man, I think yeah, that makes a lot more sense. Because then I was like, it ends on a bit of an uplifting beers, barbecue, yeah. a bit of a laugh, rather than lifting on. Yeah, <laughs> tears dad does it <laughs> before we say flag. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> it is interesting. I, I think you you made the right choice because you do you know everything builds up with those songs and you know especially. My footy dreams never come true. It was like I legitimately laughed out loud a couple of times during that. Like, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I think for me personally, that and Younger back to back, well, they weren't two favorite tracks on the mm. album. Yeah, um, so good. Dude. Yeah, like really, just because they were really fun. The beat on Younger was unbelievable. And um, then letting it kind of become somber and emotional and then bringing it back up was really, it, it made a lot of sense. Uh, you know, you, t- you touched on it a little bit before how you know there's the depressing kind of <laughs> music with like the funny lyrics and stuff yeah. how did you go about balancing you know the funny and the heart stuff because like you said um great question yeah there was the <laughs> second last track which was quite deep but then there are yeah. some other ones which are yeah um so i think there's a fine line between like comedy and serious mm-hmm. stuff to get deep and artsy for everyone listening at home but um I, I love that, you know, some of the most funniest, you know, the, the times I've laughed the most is when it's like, you know, oh, just for an example, like, you know, a, a school teacher might pass away and you, you're like, <laughs> or, you know, when, when like a family member passes away and it's like, we, we should be all quiet and sad in this room, but, oh, you know, an uncle will crack a gag or like someone will crack a gag loosen the- and, and it loosens that mood. So I think, you know, comedy, it's like comedy and sad, it's like in the same Mm. on the Venn diagram um, <laughs> and, and also like growing up I loved like How Much Your Mother and yeah. I think How Much Your Mother is like a comedy sitcom but with a bit of heart and that's what I love um, and then a part of me you know when I'm making like a Hold Out Hope or any sort of like genuine song or like something that's just a bit um, not anything that's sincere I go oh, could probably steer away from it but then I'm like I don't know I don't mind being sincere I don't mind going you know oh geez I love the boys or geez I love your dad so I don't mind that like heart in things yeah. um so yeah I didn't, I didn't mind chucking you know wholesome stuff in there but I was a little bit nervous because it's like I was scared people would go where's the comedy but I think it, you know there's obviously comedy throughout it well I, th- I think it all fits tremendously for what it's worth but uh <laughs> I wonder um you know, another thing I noticed with this album feeling really different to a lot of other footy songs is it doesn't necessarily touch on AFL too dramatically. I feel yeah. like it's an yeah. album from the point of view or for a footy punter. Yeah. yeah. Was that really intentional? Like, what? Why did you want to go that way? Um. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think. Um. Yeah, I, I remember writing "Hold Out Hope" and going, "This could be like." an English Premier League, um, like, ballad. Like, I, I remember writing it going, like, you know, <laughs> Manchester United supporters could just be like, hold out hope to win the title. Yeah. So um, I remember writing that really vaguely. And just, I remember, like, I was picturing going to the footy with Dad on the train, going through Jollymont, um, but I didn't want to write MCG and um, go to see the D. So I was just like, I just want to see my... Um, footy team win a flag and I think I don't know whether this is getting a bit too like artsy but or you know (laughs) um, yeah but I I think some of my favourite music is quite vague so instead of being like um, I love this girl her name was Kate it'll vaguely write the story of the love song and then I can fill in the gaps as someone so I think someone who's listening um, it's not like just footy related it's well I just don't think you have to be a Melbourne supporter To, well, I don't even sort of footy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like footy, you could be going to the cricket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you could probably somehow pie and chips a picture of a girl and just, you know. <laughs> but even down to relationships with mates and stuff like that, that's what I mean, yeah. is I think, you know, something like Grand Final Day, you don't have to invest in Grand Final Day like that to understand what that feel looks yeah. like. You know, that, like yeah, yeah. Like, I love that song. <laughs> that's just it's beer. Yeah, it's, it was just about beers and mates, yeah. really. But yeah, I don't know. I love Grand Final Day. I think that's... Um, yeah, it's one of my favourites because a lot of the lyrics in there, uh, and I think this is what is in the album. It's like, 
lyrics from me. Um, and that's, you know, instead of, you know, a lot of the parodies are just like observational songs about the footy year, but this is like little nuggets of like me, like, um, we always cook a brisket on grand final day. Al Baloney, shout out, always cooks a brisket. Um, Can I come this year? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, I won't be at the grand this year. <laughs> um, and... <laughs> Mita always puts on a spread, Mita Bowl. So there's like lyrics in there that are like genuinely true. And the day that I was writing about, I've been to like three or four years in a row, just getting blind with the boys. So I like that that's like a genuine um, song about like my experiences yeah, right. um, that hopefully people get around. Yeah, absolutely. It's the one that made me laugh the most. Yeah. <laughs> After hearing about the chicken, I thought I was, I was cooking the bed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember um, you got to keep that in. Yeah, I remember you saying that. I'm like, is that just that's a really weird line? And you're like, no, no, it's good. And then when we were doing the ad libs, <laughs> you can get ill. <laughs> so stupid. Oh, yeah, that, those are some of the best parts of the album as well. Those little ad libs. The Jimmy Dilkus <laughs> line floors me every single time. It's <laughs> so funny. Well, because I was like, but yeah, the, the reason that this is probably a little bit different to other footy albums and footy songs is like, it genuinely happened. Like mum was <laughs> like, all right, well, I'll buy you a Melbourne jumper for your birthday with all the money that I got for my birthday. Um, called up the club and they said, we've got a bit of a special on four Guernseys. You can get Nathan Jones, Jimmy Tumpus, Mitch Clark or someone else. And I always got like Ricky Pedard. Yeah. Um, I always got just an up and coming player that I loved because I was like, oh, it's cool. I've got him on my, my jumper. I never got like your Robos or Uzes or anything. Always got, yeah, the, the shitter players. Yeah. And, yeah, I've just got a, a, Guernsey, a Guernsey signed by Jimmy Tumpus that costs like 120 bucks just sitting in, me, in my, um, my cupboard. And I remember, I, I remember going like, this is so much money and we've, I've yeah. spent all my money on a Jimmy Tumpus top. <laughs> and yeah, just ridiculous. What is it, what's it worth now? Oh, well, it's a Christian Petrarca top now if I, you know, um, white out over the Jimmy <laughs> Topper signature. So it might be worth a little bit in a couple of years, but um, yeah, it's just dumb. But yeah, again, like that's something I think a lot of people can relate to. You know, when you're a diehard fan, you invest in the young players, you get really excited. You know, I know Oz and I always, every year, would pick two new players at the club and kind of be like, okay, that's your bloke, that's my bloke, and we yeah. see who would play the best. And yeah. I remember one year I had Ben Jacobs here, Jordan Gisbets, and really, really took it home on that yeah. one. But, uh, I remember you, know, you guys used to get around like Cruz Garland. And yeah, the yeah, players. yeah. Because you, you do when you're a diehard, you want to yeah. kind of. So I think it's yeah. Again, it brings back that I feel like this is an album for footy fans. Right, yeah. it doesn't have to be. You know, you don't have to be name dropping specific players that you need to know. It's about you know loving footy. Yeah, and it doesn't even have to be AFL. It can be your local footy. You know, yeah, yeah, songs yeah, like yeah. Back Pocket Plugger yeah. and Pie and Chips. I think apply in a lot of different spaces yeah so. that's cool it's very cool um that kind of brings me to like influences and stuff you know we've talked a little bit about how it's not like your normal footy album what were the things you guys were listening to what were the inspirations you took for putting this together what sort of artist was i throwing yeah, right. <laughs> well i think post malone was <clears throat> one um especially that pie and chips like dark trap sort of that little triplets or yeah, yeah. Um, I'm learning all music production. <laughs> yeah. um, so I think Post Malone was certainly the one that kicked it off with that dark sort of sound. Yeah. Um, and then probably he had a lot of 1975. I thought that was just it just screamed that opening because yeah. <laughs> I'd rock up and I'd be like, this has to sound like the 1975. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, whoa, is, is this actually like an instrumental from the 1975 <laughs> album? <laughs> and then um, I think. <laughs> Um, we used to joke that Hold Out Hope sounded a lot like Coldplay. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> like, straight off the bat, just sounds like yellow. It just yeah. does. Don't, <laughs> don't sue us. Um, <laughs> but I, I think, you know, from my point of view, definitely... And it was something that me, you, and Oz would always watch and joke about. It's like Lonely Island. Yeah. Um, I loved that their songs could chart. Like, YOLO made, like, the top ten in Billboard um, in America. And it's, like, songs that genuinely are charting and sound like a pop song but it's a bit yeah. of dumb stuff yeah. Yeah. like trying to have a three way yeah. and <laughs> trying to sleep with your mate's mum so I, I love Lonely Island yeah. Um, yeah. Well, a lot of pop influences though you'd say yeah like it was just mainly whatever's on whatever's on the chart on the chart yeah. right now we are just like yeah yeah yeah. so, so we're just grabbing things from a yeah. bit of everyone a bit of it, Post Malone oh, yeah, in the mix and then we'll grab a bit of <laughs> 1975 and then we've got this delicious dish yeah lovely I think um, the footy show as well. 
yeah, right. probably like they have like little songs, um, little parody songs that they do every couple of weeks. Um, when, like when I think of like footy comedy songs, probably yeah, then yeah, lovely. So Jake, for you, um, going from you know Doss has these ideas, brings it in to start recording. How does the song change? Do you feel like from you know when he comes in with this idea to when it ends up being the final product? Product. Generally, generally speaking, Doss would have come in with a little uh, on his phone, like a garage band sample of how he um, has written a song, or he, he might have just had a recording of him playing the guitar <laughs> and singing. And like, all right, Jackie boy, this is what it sounds like, and it'll just be him and his guitar singing. Or he might have like just about a full production on his little iPhone in garage band. So, I basically, when we sort of when he came over, I already sort of had an idea of the sound he wanted or, or the direction he, he sort of wanted. And then when he was over, he would sit down and say, all right, I want it to sound like this or I want it to sound like this. And we could generally tell the vibe mm. through the, um, either the lyrics or the melody. Like Hold Out Hope, you could tell is a pretty sad song. So yeah. we didn't want anything too upbeat or, or anything. And then, you know, my footy dreams don't, um, was it? Yeah. <laughs> never. <laughs> never. Dream, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, we wanted that to sort of be up, a bit uplifting and stuff. So, um, I guess when he came over, yeah, we already had what, what, the, the direction we wanted to go in. Um, and then it was just a matter of finding sounds that sort of fit, fit uh, sort of in the mix and everything. And then just play with them and maybe add some, you know, bit of this and bit of that. And um, yeah, it just turned out all right, I think. So I guess I wonder now, you know, it's, it's all done. It's all recorded, which is a pretty exciting time for you to be in. Um, <laughs> Do you have kind of an idea of like how you're going to go about releasing things? Are you going to be putting videos to every song? What's what's the idea there? We've got a little bit of a plan. I, I don't want to, like initially when it was like the four song EP, I was like, well, I don't want to play ones gets a gets a video, and so does you know everything got a video. And now I'm like, nah, I'm I can't be bothered. I'm just lazy. So I think Pine Chips hundred percent because that was like for a year now. I've had the video in my mind, and we've had that song. And that is a pain in the ass to get going. We've been working on this film clip for ages. I've been, I've rang every football stadium in the country and no one wants to let me on for a bit yeah, <laughs> right. and film some songs. So now we're looking at VFL grounds and they don't really want to bar us either. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I've had that video idea for ages. And then um, Cold Figures came later in the piece, but um, it's such a parody song. Yeah. And it's like, I don't know. I can sort of see other AFL pages on Facebook getting around it because I just name drop heaps of <laughs> yeah. cult figures. So I, I, I have made a video to that one and that's already done. So it's probably that. Um, cult figures already done. Pie and chips to come out first. And then I reckon the album probably comes out. Yeah. And then in my mind, I want to just have a big piss up at one of my mates' place and just film it and then just slap grand final day on right. top of that. Right. Um, yeah, which is weird because like, I don't know. I don't want to play ones. I feel like a bit stiff to not get a gig, but... Right. So, of those songs that aren't getting videos made, which I guess, you know, the not singles are called deep cuts, um, what would be your favourite of those, the one that you would kind of point people in the direction of? Because I know a lot of times when you put out albums, those songs can sometimes get lost in the mix. So, if you could recommend one, what would it be? Oh, I would say I don't want to play ones. Hold out hope for me. I froth that song so much. Like, it is... Um, oh. Yeah, it I, makes me moist. <laughs> so I good. think one. So I was a little bit scared that my footy dreams never come true was too unapologetically poppy. Because <laughs> I like to do pop when it's like I don't want to play one that's a bit subtle, but this is just like as bright and as in your face as it gets. Um, and that one's warmed, you know, really nicely. So I'd probably say, um, yeah, I don't want to play ones, and my footy dreams never come true. Would probably ones that I hope people get around. Looking now, you've got everything recorded, you've got your kind of video release schedule planned. Do you, I, I kind of hate this question because you're still in the middle of this, but do you have anything planned going forward to record more stuff or is that anything <laughs> like, that appeals to you at all? <laughs> this chat last night. I keep saying we're running it back for uh, DOS mode 2.0. 2.0. But um, I don't know. It, it, I hope it's like, it, it's sort of weird because it's like I'm just feeding what I know is out there. Like, I'm not making this to broaden my audience or get more, you know, followers or get more subscribers. I'm just putting it out to the people that like all yeah. the other ones previously. 
Um, and I think, and I've yeah, spoken to you about like um, originals are so much funner. You know, I'm a big analogy guy, but like you know, parodies. It's like a coloring book with the stencil already in. You just color mm. and color in the book, but originals it's like i can make anything and it's so much more fun and when i I listen to the original ones it's like yeah i'm I'm more proud of like the music like i feel like i might just release some of the instrumentals so kids can yeah you know do whatever they want over the top of them but yeah i I love yeah making the music it's so much funner so i'm hoping it's received like not too seriously but also like oh to respect for the effort you put in and then yeah it'd be cool to do it again just because of how fun it is. Yeah, right. But I'd do this again and not release it just because I like <laughs> making songs. So that, The hardest thing was the distance. So, like, if we lived a lot closer, I'm sure we'd have about seven albums already done. Yeah, there. yeah. Nah, it, it, yeah. The bloody, it's, it's a trip and a half up to yeah. bloody Frankston or wherever. <laughs> <laughs> so you spoke a little bit before, I think kind of jokingly, about the idea of doing, like, a live thing for this. And obviously with um, COVID and everything, that's not really... A possibility at the moment yeah. but is that something you think you'd like to do in the long run oh uh, um yeah absolutely yeah <laughs> it is but a part of me's like i don't want to be taken like appear like i'm tr- trying to be something i'm not right i love the thought of being on stage done stand-up done school acts done drama done whatever i love music made albums made parody songs um, I love interacting with an audience with meet and greets and stuff like that. And I love the meme of it all. Yeah. Um, so I don't, I don't want to be a singer that, you know, maybe when I was 20 writing, uh, so what you were saying last night, <laughs> <laughs> when, when I was 20 writing acoustic songs about waitresses, I, I probably thought I did, but you know, I, I don't, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm more than happy to, to write songs about footy. Um, so I just, as, as long as it doesn't appear like I'm trying to be something that I'm not, yeah. I'd love to just get pissed in the green room, have a bit of a venue, people who, you know, like my stuff and are in on the meme, come for the night and just be like, yeah, just a good take the piss night. I think that would be so much fun. But, um, yeah, a bit of a pandemic at the moment that we got to get rid of. But just a bit. Yeah, it would just be, yeah, it it would be a laugh and yeah, it would be, it'd be cool. Yeah, I think as well it's probably important and, you know, I guess it's hard sometimes, I'd assume, for you to think about it this way. But, like, people would legitimately really enjoy that, I think. Yeah. Especially listening to some of these songs. I'm like, I did it, picture on my head, you know, you up on the stage, spitting those bars or whatever. And, yeah. <laughs> you know, people, it would be a really genuinely good fun time. So yeah. I think, yeah. you know, you, I get you worry a little bit about, like, the, the image of it at all. But, like, at the end of the day, if that's what you want to do, yeah. knock it out. Why not? Um, yeah, I've definitely picture myself up there before um and it's something i just love pushing myself and testing myself and i love giving things a go like gave stand up a go wanted to give radio a go um wanted to you know i want to act i want to be in movies i can't act but i want to it's like i've I've, you know got horror movie ideas written down like i i want any talents oh well i'm uh, sort of like what's that saying jack of jack of all trades master of none like i've sort of yeah, I just want to give things a go before I fall off this earth. Um, so <laughs> it would just be sick to be 36 in my office cubicle. My kids go, I found an album on Spotify. Dad, what's this? And I go, well, yeah, when I was 24, I gave it a go. So yeah. Um, <laughs> and now I'm working in an office. <laughs> uh, do you want... Um, <laughs> yeah, so... Um, yeah, I think, yeah... I, Oh yeah, I want to give it a go. It'd well, just be fun. Well, that's it, and you know, at least then you can say, even if it doesn't like, if it ends up being a massive bloody dumpster fire of a thing, which it almost definitely wouldn't. But like, you at least go, yeah. at least I'd crack, right? Like, a part of me goes, I'd be alright at it, but imagine <laughs> we fill a room out and I just choke Mars. Yeah. <laughs> Marshall Mathers. He's choking, and I just get up and freeze, and the stage present isn't there, and like for fifty minutes, I'm just sort of. <laughs> I reckon you'd be. I think I would. Um, have a few cans of confidence. Yeah. <laughs> I would just be like, uh, who wants some? Um, yeah, no, it, it, yeah, it would be a really fun thing to do and um, something that we talk about a lot. If it happens, that'd be sick. If it doesn't, you know, I'll, I'll be in my cubicle still pretty content. <laughs> yeah. We gave the album a go anyway. Oh, lovely. Um, 
So, Jake, for you, are you much of a footy fan yourself? Oh, absolutely. I froth it like, uh, it's the greatest sport on earth, no doubt about that. Um, luckily, Holiday Hope Bike can also relate, you know, for years as a Richmond supporter, again, ah. going to the footy with Dad on the train. <laughs> In the boring what, what, right? <laughs> <laughs> Literally. wasn't quite 60 years. Um, but, yeah, when that day finally did come, 2017, I think it was the 28th of September, 2017, Pretty sure. <laughs> At 2.35. <laughs> um, yeah, like, when, when that when that happened, I was like, damn, like, this is, this is sick. This is amazing. And then that's how I can relate so much to um, to Hold Out Hope because I feel his pain. Yeah. I feel, I feel his pain. And the, the bees, they're... They're shocking. <laughs> yeah, well... Yeah, well, I can say I'm a North supporter, so I yeah. get it 100% <laughs> as well. It's, uh, yeah, it's super real. But, yeah. um, <laughs> but going every week, well, not, not this year, but going every week, um, and yeah, just wanting to see some success. Yeah. It, it's so good when, once you get that. Yeah. It's, well, it's just so surreal. Like, it seriously is. It, I can only guess. It, yeah. and probably, <laughs> probably, it's probably more important than it should be. Like, yeah. And that's why the song... It's not meant to be funny, but it probably is funny hold out hope when you look at it because it's me going, it shouldn't be this much of a big deal, but if I fall off the face of this earth and have never seen a D's flag, it's I'm, it's going to be an empty feeling. Yeah. And then I think of 60 years of how many people would have, and this is very morbid, but this is where <laughs> my brain goes, but you know, people who lived to 45 and you know, unfortunately passed away. For 45 years, they were in that gap of the D's being, oh my God, that yeah. would just be the worst. So, you know, each year it goes on, each year you get closer, I guess. Um, but yeah, just the thought of not seeing a D's flag really, really bothers me yeah. Yeah, on the daily. Well, I think that's why I like my footy dreams never come true as well, because, yeah. you know, how many times have we, you know, it's the it's the off-season, pre-season, you get this footage, everyone's apparently in the best form yeah. of their lives, you get so yeah. amped, right? You're so excited, there are these three blokes from their third year, and it's like, it's their time, you know? Oh. Uh, and then round one comes, you get obliterated. Yeah. Like, yeah. how many oh. times have you been there? And then you say, there's always next year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. And then, like, the promise, the promise yeah. to Hell and Back documentaries, yeah. and, yeah. like, yeah, the draft picks, and I remember 2013 I went, and it was Mark Neal's second year, and um, we rocked up round one, Jack Viney debuts, it's against Port Adelaide, and we'd just come off like four years of being awful, and we lost by 80 points, round one, and I just went, oh my God. And that was the season I was talking about in My Footy Dreams Never Come True, it's like, that's the years when me and your brother would go to 25, 26, AFA. I think your brother might have cracked 30, we'd go to three games a weekend, I'd get yeah. 60 bucks off mum, you know, ten for the ticket, uh, ten for the train, and then like to get into the G. If you were under sixteen, it was two dollars fifty. So Cook would get a bargain. Yeah, I, Cooko would go to one because I was seventeen or eighteen, so I couldn't get the two dollars fifty one. But Cook would go to one of the um, the office things and then just come out and go to the next one. <laughs> so we get two sixteen year old tickets and oh, yeah, I went to like thirty games. Would have gone to at least fifteen to twenty D's games and saw like two wins for the season and it was just yeah and that promise and that like oh we're going to be good we're going to be good it's um yeah it'll be worth it if we can win something but yeah it's just it's tragic and that's what you know, that's what the songs are about like this is it, it means so much to me 22 random blokes playing on a field and it makes me sad and it probably shouldn't but you know here's a banger about it <laughs> it makes me wonder from the perspective Jake, of someone who is does it feel like that do, mm. do the, the losses hurt less when you know that you're most likely going to make yeah. the finals yeah like they hurt they hurt a lot more when when you verse a non good team like a, a, a pretty crappy team I'm not saying yeah. St Kilda who we just played on the weekend is like you know, crap. But yeah. <laughs> you're expected to win. So the games you should win, um, they hurt because you're like, damn, like we're so much better than this. And to see the way they play, it's a bit heartbreaking because you know you're, they've got so much more potential and stuff. Yeah. But when you verse like a top team, like if you were to verse Collingwood, uh, well, actually, no, I'd be devastated with Collingwood. <laughs> and, and like Geelong, uh, GMHBA, like you're going to lose there. Yeah. Um, you know, as long as they put in a, a, a good crack, I don't mind. But yeah, it's just, it's, it's still devastating because you, you just want more. You just want this yeah. like a drug. And you can yeah. win as many as you want, but you just want more premierships. I, I always think, like, imagine being a Hawthorne supporter 
in that like third oh, yeah. year. Oh, yeah. Like, what do you are you like? Yeah, what are you feeling? Because it's like you've yeah, seen right. two in two years. That's more than anyone should see in their lifetime. Almost. Yeah. So that's how hard premierships are to win. And going into that third year, are you like? We want more, we want, oh, I don't know, that three grand for, oh, that would just be, I couldn't imagine, yeah. that would just be crazy. Yeah, I, yeah, it's it's kind of hard to wrap your head around. Um, that does, and I, I need to move off this, but it's fascinating, someone who's actually seen a premiership, mm. it feels like such a rare, a rare thing. But, but it's funny, because I was sitting in both of your spots four years ago, <laughs> yeah. going, like 2016, like, we're With never going to make it. Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. Tyrone yeah. Vickery taking Mark when the ball's <laughs> four. It's not even in the stadium. Yeah. We've got Liam Fallen over. I'm thinking, you know, we're going down here. We've got Ben Cousins as well a few years ago. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> oh, we were in bad places. But, yeah, like 2017 when things just started rolling that, that way, you're thinking, holy moly, we're giving ourselves a crack. And then just to get to a grand final, which I'd never been to one before, I'm sitting there and, like, Thank God I got front row seats at a grand final in the Richmond Tube Like It was a dream come true. I couldn't ask for a better day in my life. I'm sitting in the front row on the fence. Like, going, oh, we've made it to a grand final. Like, this, yeah. is, this is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I, I never thought we could, we could get here. Like, yeah. you think you will, but you never actually believe you sort of are there. And I'm just sitting there like, holy shit, I didn't give a crap about what happens, what the outcome yeah, is. Of course you yeah, want to win, yeah, but it's just yeah. awesome to say, yeah, I've been to a grand final. And then when, when one of them, uh, when, when we smashed Adelaide, I'm thinking, holy moly, and just the tears started to roll. Yeah. Like, oh my goodness. And then just to top it off, the boys come running around like in front oh, of me. Oh, the cup up right in front of me. I've got my hand on the cup. I'm like, oh, like, I don't care if I die right now. Like, <laughs> Yeah. Just I don't care. That's, yeah, that's crazy. I get teary thinking about that yeah. stuff. I, I, yeah, I do too. Like I remember uh, 2018 when the D's made the prelim. Like that build up to the elimination final, we get over the line against the Cats. Oh my god, this is the best. Not like it's funny. Like like you'd go, oh yeah, been at the grand final, holding the cup with the mm. boys, probably the best moment. And I go, mm. oh, beat Geelong in an elimination final, yeah. probably the best game I've been to. <laughs> and then like we played the Hawks the next year. Uh, the next week and you don't want to verse the Hawks like even if it's you know mm. no matter what year in the finals you don't want to come up no. against the Hawks and a young demon list with like 20 year old Clay Oliver 20, 20 year old Petrarca have beaten you know your Selwoods and Ablets and then you know I don't know who the Hawks had left in that team but yeah. like a, a, a pretty strong Hawks list and then I remember going a prelim we're in a pre-. and like, it didn't hit me till like the Wednesday if we win we're in a pre- what like yeah. I, like when it's the semi final you feel like you're still so far away yeah. and then it's like prelim week and I'm like in a couple of days we could be in grand like and then we got flogged but yeah it's just like I could not imagine going that next step yeah yeah and then that next step and then oh man it would just be ridiculous yeah I've I've been in that same boat twice we were in that prelim and it's like yeah but you're not going to you know yeah. and then the game starts and it's like. We, we might be on here. We might, I think it was when we played West Coast and we were up by 15, 20 points a quarter time. It's yeah. like, we're on. Yeah. We're on. And then Josh Ken- Kennedy was like, no, I'm on. And yeah. <laughs> um, I'm looking forward to seeing it out there. You know, uh, actually getting, I'm sure, getting to see the response from yeah, people will be pretty be massive. So. That's the most exciting thing is like now it's done. And we did have some implications, or some some problems, you know, with with the sound. We've been through hell and back with, with some audio and... Is mastering normally hard? I think so. I, I try and stay out of it because it's yeah, probably too far above part. my head. Yeah. Well, it was pro- prior to that, where <laughs> just quickly we had this, we finished everything, and like there was what song did we have left? Uh, hold out hope or there was the one I think it was young. Oh one. no, grand grandfather. One one of them. We'd finished everything, and I sent them all to DOS. Like how did these all sound just before I mastered them? So yeah. Oh, actually. There's, there's no guitar in one. Oh, yeah, it, it was Hold Out Hope. You, you sent me it, and I'd listen to it like on loop for the week, just in my car, and I'm like, this is, I love this. And then you sent me it, and it was like, I think that's my dad's watch. Um, yeah, you sent me it, and it was like, and the drums weren't coming yeah, through. Yeah. And I was like, oh, you know, it's stuffed up on the, uh, on the export. Um, just export it again. And then Jake goes, no, that's the file. That's, yeah. Yeah, that's how it sounds. So it was just like, there's a few songs though where for some reason I have yeah. no idea how some some like little sounds and some audio just change slightly and you know I'm thinking we're supposed to be done like like we only had one thing to do and like 
Yeah, we had yeah we had one song to master, and I, I was expected to wake up the next day and everything be done. And then all of a sudden, it's like well, this song's missing this, this song's missing that, and I was like, I don't want to make too much more effort, but I sort of want them to sound like what they did yeah. a day ago. So it's like, oh, I don't want us to be working on these for ages, but I liked how they sounded. So yeah, mastering and mixing was a bit of a, a bit of a task. Yeah. So you guys did all of it between the two of you. Well, I don't know all how to do it, so I just <laughs> let Jakey get on work that I in. I did my best to do it all. Wow. Uh, but it, it was quite funny, and what I felt bad for you for is, um, like, especially like cult figures, it's just layers of guitar yeah. and drums yeah. and sounds, and I love that feeling. So I take it to Jake, and he cleans it up, and it's beautiful, it sounds beautiful. And then I go, this is an amazing job. But it doesn't have that guitar oh, that I loved about it. Yeah. <laughs> so he's just made it sound like a good song. And I'm like, make it sound like a shit. Like, yeah. <laughs> make it sound right. a little bit shitter. Um, so that, yeah, that was also something that I felt bad for you for. It's like, you're making these sounds good, but sort of not to my yeah. taste. And, I, you know, if no one else likes this album, I want to like it. So yeah. it was a bit selfish me, you know, telling me to change <laughs> stuff like that. But... I, I think that can be one of the trickiest things I'd have to imagine for a producer is to try and get, you know, what's in the writer's head and well, actually yeah, make yeah. it work, especially if they don't, and I, I don't mean this in any kind of disparaging way, but don't have necessarily the vocabulary to yeah, say yeah, what yeah. they're after. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like when I make a song for me, I know the sound I'm after, so I yeah. can sort of, you know, put put that into into perspective on the computer and everything's there and in my head. And I know how to sort of transition it from, from here into the computer. Whereas from Caden, it was, okay, I need to get what's in this little thing yeah. and put it into that. Yeah. <laughs> but through me, if that makes sense. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. That, that was the most difficult thing, but I think it worked out. Like, what, we're pretty happy with yeah. not pretty well. I'm, I'm pretty stoked with the end result. It's, as we said, six months, maybe more in the making. And to see the finished result now, like as soon as I finished it, we found the the original Hold Out Hope. Yeah, so Hold Out Hope was done. Like the um, the file was corrupted. Like the right. actual recordings of guitar, everything was stuffed. And I was like, oh no. So Jake worked on it for another week to make it sound similar to what it did sound like. And I was like, oh, if this is what we put out, I'm actually content. Because yeah. I think people will listen and go, oh, that's a good song. But it wasn't the, yeah, it wasn't the song that we had. And then deep in your files, you I've found I've got it. like my iTunes library. And I, like when, when I export a file, I'd click on it and listen through iTunes because it's a WAV file. And I was listening to, I was, I was like, oh, there's three holdout hopes. What are they? So I click on the first one. Oh, it's the crap one. Yeah. Click on the second one. Oh, it's a crap one. Click on the third one. I'm like, ooh, hello. Yeah. yeah hello. Right. And then I realized I've still got it. Unreal. And I was like, I'm not going to touch this. We have to leave it how it is. Yeah. So if it's crap, sorry, Kados. Yeah. So I sent it to him and he's like, that's we've done one, it we've done it so um, as soon as that was done like I, I called Kate and was like we've done this mate I'm like yeah it's, it's a good feeling to finally finish an album that's taken a while had our implications um, and say yeah we've we've done our best I think yeah and now we're excited to see um, I guess the response of yeah. how everyone will will sort of of what they think of the song and what the favourite's going to be and yeah what doesn't get the result you yeah oh it's always a surprise yeah i find you know uh like we're, 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 we've got our our favorites and our least favorites i guess and we're just seeing you know because it'd be interesting to see if our least favorites are the viewers favorites or yeah, right, or yeah. our favorites are the least favorites i think that'll be quite interesting because yeah. generally the what do they say like the ones you don't expect to do yeah. well generally do well yeah. Well, how many times have you heard the story of the you know chart smashing single that the person who put yeah, it out even wasn't even going to put it on, <laughs> yeah, thing, on yeah. the album? You know? Yeah, all the time. Like, like, give me some hope for about six of these songs. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, you know, even from the reaction I got from you guys when I told you my favourites, like it's you just don't know sometimes. Yeah, 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 yeah. legit. Yeah, um, up, one yeah. of the songs you mentioned that I thought wasn't going to make it, um, but. Yeah, I've warmed to it. I've warmed to it. Oh, good. So. I'm glad to hear it. There. Yeah, really good. But um, do you have an idea yet of when you're planning on it actually being out there and released? So Back Pocket Plugger came out on my birthday last year, August 14th. Right. So that's a month and a half from now. And I reckon that's probably... And it's a Friday. And I like, like yeah, new, new Music Friday is a Spotify playlist I, I subscribe to. So music on a Friday coming out, um, I sort of like. So 
potentially on my birthday in August, August 14th, Brilliant. Right? the full package. But we just need to get this Pine Chips video done to come out before it all. Gotcha. And that's, um, that's been a bit of a pain in the ass, but we'll get there. <laughs> all right, well, I guess we'll just keep an eye out. I guess so. so. <laughs> awesome. Thanks heaps, guys. It was great. Perfect. Perfect. Done. Easy. Thank you so much. No, no worries. I hope